We're about to be joined once again by the political miracle worker of the United States Senate. No state is as happy with both of their senators as Vermont has been. Patrick Leahy and Bernie Sanders each have a 64% approval rating in the state of Vermont. Senator Leahy just retired from the Senate, and so his successor, Peter Welsh, has a pretty big approval rating to try to fill there. But Vermont is a solidly democratic state, and we have seen that kind of approval rating before for other Democratic senators in solidly Democratic states. But who is the most popular Democratic senator in a Republican state? And I mean a heavily Republican state. Donald Trump won the state of Montana by 20 points in 2016 and 16 points in 2020. Every statewide office holder in Montana is a Republican except Democratic Senator John Tester, who has a 60% approval rating in the state of Montana, where they know he's a Democrat. And in a period when President Biden's approval ratings have been struggling, John Testers have just been going up. A morning consult report says since President Biden took office in 2021, Testers' approval rating has improved 12 points, driven largely by a surge in support in recent months among independents, 65% of unaffiliated voters approve of Tester's job performance, the highest rating among that group of any other senator during the fourth quarter of 2022. Along with Tester's strong marks from independents, he also has solid backing from Montana Democrats, stronger, in fact, than any other Democrat who faces re-election next fall. Senator Tester has not yet announced whether he will run for re-election. So if you want him to run for re-election, give him a big round of applause right now when I introduce him. I guess you'll have to video your applause on your phone and then tweet it so Senator Tester can see it on Twitter. Whether he runs or not, Senator Tester has stepped forward as a leader already on what will be the most important governing issue facing the Senate this year and possibly the most important campaign issue for Democrats. Senator Tester has sent a letter to the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Minority Leader Mitch McConnell letting them both know that he will be on the Senate floor to stop tax legislation the Republican House plans to pass, H.R. 25, a bill that will impose a 30% national sales tax on every purchase of any goods and services may, that tra is transacted anywhere in the United States. Senator Tester's letter is in effect reserving floor time right now for him to speak. He says, quote, in the letter, if brought to the U.S. Senate floor, I will take on anyone to defeat H.R. 25 on behalf of Montanans. Joining us now is the senior senator from Montana, John Tester. He is the chairman of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee and a member of the Senate Appropriations Committee. Senator, thank you very much for joining us uh, tonight. I hope you can hear that applause out there right now. There's people in living rooms all over the country just standing up. Um, they don't want to lose you. They, they, they want, they want uh, six more years, no matter how much energy you have left. Uh, Senator, uh, so I've asked you this before, but really these numbers are, are astonishing. And I don't get into polling and, and racehorse stuff and that kind of thing on this show. But what's happening in, in your approval rating in Montana, there has to be a lesson about how we approach our politics and how you speak to people uh, who are in the other party, who, who can then support you. Well, there's, there's a couple things, Lawrence, and thank you for the kudos, but a couple things. My wife and I still farm. We still run the operation. We still plant the crops. We cut the hay and, and we harvest the crops and we, and we haul the grain and, and, and pulse crops to market. That's number one. Uh, it keeps you grounded. Number two, uh, I still believe in listening to the people of the great state of Montana and taking their ideas back to Washington, D.C., and trying to make a difference with their ideas. And I think the majority of the people in Montana understand that and they appreciate that. And, and that is that is really, uh, I think, a, a foundational issue uh, to our democracy, and that is the voice of the people. And, and I believe it needs to be elevated, and I think I am a conduit to elevate that voice, and I do my very best to do that and make sure that the policies that come out of Washington, D.C. work for rural America and specifically for Montana. Let's go to this letter, uh, because I, I have to say I've never seen anything like it. I mean, here's a proposal in the House of Representatives, 
hasn't come to a vote yet there, but they are supporting the idea of eliminating the income tax and then replacing it with this national sales tax. They apparently don't know that most Americans pay more in Social Security taxes than they pay in income taxes. Income taxes aren't the burden uh, that they seem to think it is. Uh, but you're saying, listen, I want floor time. I want to reserve it right now because I want to be out there uh, presumably fighting this every minute that it's on the floor of the United States Senate. What is your argument against it? Montana does not have a sales tax. This is a really bad idea to put a 30 percent tax on everything that's sold. It hurts working families across our country and in Montana. And for those very reasons, since it's bad policy, I think it's incumbent upon myself to be able to go to the floor and and object to this. And I will tell you, this isn't a silent filibuster. I will talk till uh, uh, till the end of time, because this is really really bad policy in a time where we're fighting high health care costs and high housing costs and child care costs now we've got republicans in the house that want to put a 30 percent sales tax on everything we buy that's totally ridiculous it's bad policy and i'm going to fight to stop bad policy uh how, how would it work uh in in montana and throughout the country what this tax would be and how do, how do they believe that this then eliminates the IRS? Well, I think the whole idea is that they want to put this in place of, of income tax. But the truth is, is what happens is, is that it raises costs for every, uh, every person across this country and in Montana by 30 percent. I mean, that's huge. And, and like I said, Montanans uh, don't particularly like sales tax. We have uh, a few areas of the state where they have a, a, a tax on tourists. It's a sales tax. But the truth is, is it, we do not want a sales tax in Montana. And we do not want the federal government telling us, oh, no, you have no say over this. We're going to drive one down your throat. Uh, because it'll increase costs. It'll hurt business. It'll really hurt working families across our state. And uh, and I'll tell you, that's not the right thing to do. And I think, quite frankly, it's a silly, doggone idea. And uh, and like I said, uh, over my dead body, we will fight. Uh, we'll fight uh, every day until this thing goes down to defeat. And it would actually raise taxes uh, on most taxpayers. It's only the rich that would end up paying anything significantly less than what they pay now in income taxes. The Republicans want to couple this with massive spending cuts uh, in order to, as they say, uh, basically eliminate the deficit. Uh, this, uh, the spending cuts that you have to go to to do what they are talking about doing are Social Security and Medicare. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look, it should come no surprise that uh, the Republicans are going to put forth a proposal that gives the rich tax breaks and puts the, the tax burden on, on the middle class. That, that happens over and over and over again. Uh, but in the end, I will just tell you, Lawrence, uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for America. It won't build America. It won't keep America the strongest country in the world. Uh, what it will do, it will tear us down. It will make the, the discrepancy between the richest and the poorest even greater. And that's not the direction we need to go. We need to have equity in this country where the taxes are equitable. Everybody pays their fair share, and, uh, and we work to pay this debt down over that process.